Hello everyone, welcome to another 3D Total interview. Today we have the amazing and phenomenal Gretel Lusky. Gretel is an illustrator and comic book artist based in Argentina. You might recognize her art for its vibrant colors, bold marks, beautiful empowering female characters. It gives you a sense of joy, wonder, and just all time gives you so much good vibes, right? <laughs> so Gretel has worked with clients like DC Comics, Boom Studios, and Netflix. And today, we're here to chat with Gretel on her upcoming book with 3D Total. So thank you so much, Gretel. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to have this interview. I've been following your work since so long now. So I, I absolutely love your art. Your art is, like I said, so beautiful. All the vibrant col colors, the beautiful women, the gorgeous, bold, marks you know i absolutely love your art so i'm so excited for this book i'm looking forward to it and i'm sure everyone watching this interview is looking forward to it as well i know you've been dropping some like hints and teasers yeah, on your instagram yeah. story i've been like seeing just a, a bit of like bit. oh <laughs> just a little bit you know uh so <laughs> before we get into the questions would you like to introduce yourself a bit more tell us a bit about your backstory your artistic journey the table's yours yeah um, well, my name is Gretel Luzki. I'm an illustrator and comic book artist. I'm from Argentina and I, I have always loved drawing, like most kids. I, I, I started drawing since I was very little. One of my very first early memories was when I was around eight years old that I used to draw some silly comics of my childhood dog and myself, like superheroes and we fight the bad guys together that were my sister and our other other dog and that was like my first memory i have of drawing and then when i was around 11 years i got really obsessed with cartoons from that time from uh, early 2000s and i just uh, it just blew my mind away and i really got like very obsessed with drawing and copying whatever i saw and I just, I, I loved coming up with new stories and characters and, and I copied a lot, but I also tried to come up with my own stuff because it was just so fun. Um, my family, I was always very supportive. Um, my mom would sign me to art classes and they always uh, were like, like very supporting. Um, like they saw that I was really interested in art, so they always push, push me uh, on that direction. Uh, when I was around 14 years old, I, I opened uh, a DeviantArt account and started sharing my art online. So I, I have been sharing my art online for quite some years now. Um, but yeah, uh, most of my childhood and teenage years were, was just very straightforward, you know, like just embracing this love for art. Uh, it was when high school was getting over that kinds that things started to get kind of uh, rough because even though i absolutely love drawing i had no idea how to make a career out of it i didn't know which were my possibilities and how to you know make it work and yeah, my, my family asked me to go to, to college and have a degree, so I knew, I figured that it would be a nice idea to go into college and try to figure my way out while, while I was studying, and that's what I did. And college was, I mean, we don't have a lot of, you know, art-oriented careers here in Argentina, so I didn't have many options, I had to choose between uh, graphic design or visual arts so I got into visual arts just because the program felt more suitable for me so uh, yeah I have mixed mixed feelings about college uh, it it helped me a lot in certain uh, like subjects like I learned a lot a lot of about art history and uh, you know drawing and painting, live drawing sessions, but I didn't have any, you know, classes about digital art or illustration or um, or the things that I was really interested on. So I had to keep uh, studying all that by my own. Um, but yeah, 
at some point, I believe uh, there was like this, one of the few animation studios here in Argentina was like hiring people and I got, and I just applied for, for that job and they, you know, they replied back that they wanted to see a, a character design test from me and so I did it and a few months later I had a job and that was, I mean, this was around when I was 21 years and working as a character designer on Animation Studio was uh, the, my very first official job ever and it was a pretty eye-opening experience because what that was like an inflection point of my life in which I realized that I could in fact make a career out of my art so it was like a pretty uh, important uh, thing to me and also because I met a lot of incredible people, a lot of incredible artists that I learned so much from them and it, this, this job made me, you know, improve a lot, a lot, a lot faster and, and yeah, that was like a very like inflection point of my life and after, I mean, juggling, you know, college with work was a little difficult at the beginning um, then work started to take over my life and I ended up dropping college to focus entirely on work and so far it's not a decision I regret um, I, 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 I'm happy how, how things turn out for me uh, yeah a few years into the studio I got contacted by Dizzy Comics to work on a, uh, on a project they were uh, working on and yeah, that's where my freelance life started, and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> that's amazing, honestly. Um, I love hearing about how you, like you said, you ha decided to go to college, were not sure, but eventually you just kept pushing and you're like, you know, this is going to work, I'm going to just keep trying. And eventually, here you are today, a full-time freelance illustrator, comic book artist. It's amazing. It's so, like, it's so, you know, it's so motivational to hear. Can you tell us a bit how you balanced, um, you know, working on your personal work while also working, uh, having a full-time job? I mean, at this point, you probably had already started uh, posting on Instagram more often and maybe like trying to get your yourself out there. How were you able to balance this? Can you talk a bit more about like the balance and? Yeah, yeah, I believe. Um... I was lucky that, uh, you know, sharing my art very, always came very natural to me. Uh, it was something that I, I, I did for fun at first. And I, I, I was just focused, you know, on doing stuff that just, uh, it was important to me and just sharing it with the world. And eventually when you start, you know, you keep consist consistently uh, posting, uh, and improving and getting better, uh, you know, clients and people start noticing you and they start to come to you and reach out. Um, but yeah, I, I think the balance, I try, I mean, since I have done, you know, personal work since the very beginning, uh, I have like a very strict rule of, you know, taking my personal work as a pr priority. So, no matter how tough client works, no matter how tough client work can get, I always try to, you know, make time for drawing for myself because I know it's, it's, it's just very important and I know I can get really anxious if I go too much time without, you know, creating just for fun and for me. So it's just something that I need to, you know, balance and make it work. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I totally agree with you. I think finding time to make personal art is very key because, I mean, that's we all started making art because we loved making art, right? Sometimes if we get blinded by like, oh, work and job and I need to do this, we can kind of like forget the joy and the passion we had for, you know, when like we had when we were a kid, like drawing and making stories and creating characters. So I really agree with you that. It's very important to also make time to make some personal work. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah. Speaking of your yeah. personal work, I like I said, I've been following your art for a very long time now. I love your work. I, I want to talk more about your inspirations. You briefly mentioned some of them, but I know uh, 
you're inspired by the ocean and yeah. nature can you talk a bit more about like some of your inspirations and how you're able to channel your inspiration into your personal work yeah well for me it all started with cartoons as i mentioned uh, shows like a teen titans wings club this is uh, they were they were like really the thing that started it all for to me also the witch comics by um Alex alessandro barbucci those are like, whoa, that was incredible. It is, yeah. Um, so yeah, those, those were, those, that was like the kind of uh, the initial recipe for develop my, my style. And then, uh, you know, I feel, I, 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 nowadays I feel inspired by the everyday and the little things. I just, I love telling, I love creating art that tells like a story just no matter how big or small it is and i love to put you know it's my art is a reflection of the things i like and the things i feel and the things i want to you know uh, represent in a single image so it's just like a mishmash of all the things i love and the sea and the ocean it's just i'm really inspired by uh, the nature and and all things fantastical and I don't know what's with me and the sea and the mermaids, but I just, it's something I, I really love and inspire me, inspires me so much. It never fails to, you know, make me want to pick up a, a pencil. I mean, of course, like everyone gets inspired by everything, right? It's like, sometimes you don't even know why, right? Like sometimes I look at, I look at my wall and the way the light is reflecting on the wall inspires yeah. me. It's like, why? Why does such a simple thing spark so much like inspiration in my heart at all, you know? And it's just so amazing how like as artists, we're able to channel those little sparks into creating something that's meaningful and, you know, that someone can look at and feel inspired by as well, you know, because like, you, you know, you get inspired by nature, you put that into your art, I see your art, I get inspired by your art, and I make other art, and other people, and it's, it's just a continuous like chain, and I think that's what's very beautiful and just like amazing. Um, so we've been talking about like your art and everything, and now I'm happy to say that you're finally launching your first book with 3D Total, your first art book. Uh, let's talk about that. I'm so excited for the book, like I mentioned earlier. Um, can we first talk about the name? Can you tell us the name of the book and tell us the meaning behind the name? Why did you decide to pick that name? And just tell us a bit about that. I really wanted this book to, you know, have a, like a big title and a big word that encapsulated uh, what this book is about and uh, something that ev evokes like a sense of wonder and adventure just things that I liked and inspired me so uh, coming up with a name and doing the cover was like a very uh, intertwined process you know it was like very back and forth process and when I was uh, working on the cover I didn't know yet what the title was going to be so it was like trying to solve a puzzle and just putting all the elements together because I, I knew what I wanted, like I wanted to, you know, make a cover that um, represented my art style and the things I like and also that uh, encapsulated what this book means to me, you know. Um, so yeah, while, while, while I was working on the cover, I was just, um, there, there, there was like a, a lot of back and forth um Re, my editor was so uh, uh patient with me because i was very, being like so picky with uh, the title and everything and it was actually my partner who suggested the word uh, wayfinder which was um like everything clicked to me at that moment because for those who don't know uh, wayfinder comes from wayfinding which is uh, an ancient Polynesian uh, practice of navigating the, like the open ocean by looking at the sky and the stars and the swells of the water uh, in order to you know f find your direction direction in order to know where you are going and I just I, I, I a practice I feel it's really fascinating not only for their the strong connection to the sea which is something I absolutely love but but I also fell in love with the more uh, literal aspect of the word wayfinder which is simply someone who finds their way 
And for me personally, art has always been the thing that, you know, allowed me to find my way over and over again. And it's, it's art has always been my North Star, my guide, and the thing that allowed me to navigate through life. So it just all came together perfectly. Um, it just made perfect sense that I wanted this book to be called Wayfinder. That is honestly beautiful. I think that is a perfect and the most suiting name for a book. And I hope that anyone who gets their hand on this book can also be able to like, you know, find their way and also uh, find the passion and, you know, can able to like resonate with the meaning behind that book. That is honestly, I think that's such yeah. a fitting name. Yeah, I think you. Well, I know that most people that would probably grab a book of this, uh, will grab a copy of this book are, you know, artists or aspiring artists or people that is just genuinely interested in art. So I really hope that they also can, you know, relate to this feeling of having art as a the core thing of oneself, you know. Definitely, I'm sure they will. Oh, you mentioned a bit about the cover. Can we talk a bit about the cover? What was your process like? Tell us a bit about the cover of the book. Yeah, so it was kind of a hard thing. I, I knew I wanted to do something very special and that felt magical and that represented, again, my, my style and what this book was about. So that was a lot of pressure. So I, I started by doing a few cover sketches based on different uh, subjects I like. So I did one based with focus on nature, another on space, and another uh, focus on the sea. And the 3D Total team gave me their feedback and the one that they liked the, liked the most was the, the, the space one. And it was my favorite too because I think it, it conveyed better this feeling I was trying to, to, to capture. Um, yeah, that was pretty much, again, it's, it, it wasn't very planned, it was all very, like, sometimes you just got a drastic process. I, I knew what I wanted, but I wasn't sure how it was going to look in the end, so I just went for it, and I'm, little by little, everything fell into, into place. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you have to trust your gut, right? Like you just need to like yeah. go for it and just do it and eventually things just fall in place and everything just works out fine. Like I'm sure like the book is gonna be so beautiful and I know everyone is gonna like love it and I, the art is definitely gorgeous. <laughs> so yeah, I think everything worked out well. <laughs> the, we were talking about the book and the outside of the book, the title of the book. What about inside? Let's talk about like the content of the book. Can you share a bit, you know, no spoilers. But can you tell us a bit what we can expect from the book? Any tutorial? Yeah, I mean, I tried to make this book as complete and inspiring as possible. Uh, I have never had, you know, done a, 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 an official art book before. I have done like very, I self-published a few small um, books, but nothing like this. I have never poured so much of myself into anything like this before. So this book is just, it's just packed with all the things close to my heart and things that I know people want to know about me and my work. Um, about you know, I, I, throughout the years, I have been, I have received a lot of questions, and I know what uh, people are interested in knowing and learning from me. So I definitely took that into consideration when, when I was making this book. So there's a lot of um, opinions and thoughts on and a lot of subjects like, um, you know, designing characters, choosing colors, and uh, my opinions on uh, imposter syndrome, on, uh, you know, letting go of perfectionism, and a lot of uh, stuff that I feel is going to be uh, helpful. And there's a lot of tips uh, throughout the whole book, but there's also two tutorials I did uh, with the step of uh, step by step process of both my digital approach and my traditional approach. Uh, can I ask which chapter did you are you most excited for people to see? Oh, uh, I'm excited for everything. I there's this chapter I wrote um, called, called "Embracing the Mess," which I think it's a very interesting chapter because I talk a little bit about the good and the not so good aspects of the creative process and how to 
uh, you know, I talk about um, how to stay motivated and this, what, what, what I mentioned before, like how to let go of perfectionism and start embracing mistakes and how to, you know, we should learn from our mistakes and uh, yeah, that's like a very interesting chapter because I know people, I, I, I usually post like very short process videos of, on, on social media with uh, my traditional process and I know people seem to be really, really, really interested in my, in the messy quality, quality of my work uh, and the imperfection and I really wanted to do like a breakdown on that on how I approach sketching and line work to, you know, share a few tips that help me to not strive for perfect art and just embrace the, the fun aspect. I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, sometimes being an artist can, you know, you have, there's this pressure, especially like I always say uh, with social media and lots of, you know, everything going on in the world, you can sometimes just feel like, you know, you're not making any progress or you can feel like overwhelmed or you feel like you always have to be your best self. And that can be very, very daunting and very stressful. And, you know, sometimes uh, people just see it online and just assume that everything is fine. But like everyone struggles too sometimes, you know, not everything yeah. is always perfect. Sometimes, you know, we have ups and downs. And um, uh, speaking of ups and downs, uh, could you tell us, did you have any um ups and downs while working on this book or the entire campaign the pro you know and can you share with us some of those uh highest moments and the lowest moments and how you were able to overcome the lowest moments uh i think one of the lowest moments was i mean this whole book is like a high for me you know high moment um but one of the i think one of the most difficult things for me was writing a whole book in a language that it's not mine so that was kind of a struggle sometimes um, because I really wanted you know to sound uh, eloquent and express and people so that people can understand what I was trying to express and yeah that was kind of a struggle because I really wanted it to be good um, but other than that, I think it's it's just I think the other thing that was kind of uh, difficult was trying to you know trust that the decisions you are making when you are gathering the material and ma just making decisions uh, you just have to trust that everything will good look everything will go will look good in the end and regarding the highest moments. I believe that one of my favorite parts was when I was like putting together the first chapter of the book when of my early years and just gathering uh, my, my old art and reflecting on, on, the, on the past and my whole story and I was like wow I'm really making a book out of this and people are going to you know read this that was a very powerful moment and was like very special Definitely. It's, you know, making an art book, I think, is something that lots of artists would hopefully want to one day achieve, you know, a book, a collection of all your work in the hands of someone who admires your work. It just, it's just like a very big milestone, right? And I'm sure like most people watching this interview are so excited to finally have uh, a collection of Gretel's art, you know, all the beautiful art you see. You know, sometimes looking at it on Instagram doesn't do it justice, right? It just doesn't. There's something different about like holding an art book and flipping through the pages and like admiring the art in like its full potential right and I'm, I'm i'm so excited like i said i'm so excited to see all your beautiful vibrant colors being like uh represented and like uh, you know in a book form i'm really excited for that um so yeah speaking of the campaign can you tell us a bit of the rewards that the backers can get while uh supporting this campaign yeah so uh there's gonna be like beautiful jiggly prints um some enamel pins that I'm really excited because I have never done enamel pins before and so glad that they are part of the campaign. Um, also, there's gonna be uh, uh, this, uh, the thing I'm, mo I'm most excited about is this scene that collects all the work I have done over the years 
with uh, with um, the Sailor and Mermaid story, which is uh, the people that follow my work for a long time, they have been asking me to you know know more about this story that I've been developing in my mind for years now. So it's it's like a scene that collects all the things I have done with new material and some writing extracts that share a little bit of the story. And I'm really excited about that. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be also, you know, add-ons for the for all backers. And there's like a double side bookmarks and uh, a set of, of stickers and a set of two postcards, I believe, too. And uh, yeah, it's really exciting uh, stuff. That's so that sounds very fun. Sounds very, you know, very compact and entertaining. It, like we, like you said, it was. It's definitely taking some time to get to where you are. And right now, there are artists all around the world who are just starting off their journey. And you know, maybe they feel like, will I ever get to that point? Is it ever possible? Will I ever get to where she is? You know, is there is there a chance for me in like reaching that level? What advice will you have to those beginner artists? Any general advice? My advice would be, and I know this might sound a little bit cliche, but I truly believe it's really important is to draw whatever makes you happy. Whatever it is that you love, you absolutely should follow that. Um, when something comes from a genuine place, uh, it just it just shows through the art, you know? And my second advice would be to not get too much lost in the social media game these days, which I know it's kind of tricky. Uh, social media has changed a lot since I first started sharing my art uh, many years ago, so I know how difficult it became nowadays. Um, but yeah, my my best advice is to not focus too much on followers or likes or al algorithms and uh, just do stuff and create art that is meaningful to you. I totally agree with you. I, I feel like uh, getting swamped with the social media game and trying to, you know, beat the algorithm and, you know, try to like you know, care, when you're caring too much about the numbers, I think it's very overwhelming and especially as a beginner, it can kind of be very discouraging. So I totally agree with everything you said. And I feel that, yeah, people should just focus on creating art that they love and art that they want to, you know, make more of. And eventually, naturally, like things just kind of like a puzzle fit and find your place. So yeah, uh, I would like to also ask a bit about like, what are your final conclusions with the book? Like, like your general, just your general experience, like working on the project. Just tell us a bit about that. Uh, so yeah, working on this project is really a dream come true to me, and it's a huge achievement. And I really hope that I mean I poured everything I got into this, and I'm really, I really hope that people can find it inspiring, and just um, yeah, I'm really grateful for this opportunity and. And just uh, I'm I'm happy I'm able to uh, share my work on this and um, a beautiful book. Of course, and I'm sure like everyone is excited to finally, like I said, have that beautiful book in their hands. So thank you so much, Gretel. Like I mentioned, we've gone through all the questions. <laughs> so once again, thank you so much for taking your time to have this interview. I'm so excited, and I cannot wait to see the final result. So thank you so much. Thank you so much.